Hey, I'm Ike. Welcome to Draw Process. Today I'm drawing page number 22 of my first uh, episode of First Sun and Sword. This one's called Crocodile City. Uh, we're wrapping up a scene on this page. Uh, I show you the thumbnail, my process. I talk about the choices I'm making on the page, the techniques I use, uh, and the thoughts that I'm having. Uh, and then I'll show you the finished page at the end. Okay, for this page, I am showing you here two versions of the thumbnail. The one on the left was the first one that I came up with. Um, and then the one on the right is, is the new one. Um, I decided to start with, on this new one on the right, an establishing shot first. Uh, let some of the dialogue play out there. Focus on, uh, then on the next panel, sword's uh, pause. And then sword pulling a ball out. It's a gift. It's the eye from the beetle. And earlier pages and then swords leaving the room and we see this this one more contemplating moment uh sword and son's feeling there and then sword decides to say well come with me boy uh so he wasn't there's the feeling that he wasn't sure that he wanted to bring the boy with him um if he might abandon the boy here there's at least some hesitation there for him um, but yeah, the new thumbnail there definitely captures that better. And that's why I changed it. I wanted to focus on those, uh, sort of emotional beats, uh, that, that I didn't know about yet. I, I now that I've lettered and finalized the, all the pages before this, I had a better idea of where I needed to end, uh, the scene. Um, so the, yeah, and this isn't just the end of the page, it's the end of the scene. So Sword and Son are leaving, uh, the Weaver's house. And so when he's like, Hey, come on, son, we're leaving. Uh, that's like literally him leaving, uh, the scene. Next will be, uh, you know, they'll go outside and, um, get on the boat again and, uh, but but right after this page, we're going to go back to Farah's point of view because she's been watching them, uh, kind of like for safety, just to watch if they're, if they're being followed or uh, if they're in danger to warn them. And so we're back to her, uh, what she's been doing while they're in there, or while they're leaving at least. And then we'll get into a big fight scene and, and some fun stuff. So, um, yeah, this is the last, uh, this scene is the big sit and talk, um, uh, exposition scene, I guess. Um, and so there's been quite a few pages here that have been, uh, sitting around in this room at le less, uh, less action, you could say less fun. Um, but, uh, it, it's important to the story. Um, my goal with like, well, one of the goals with this story was, to tell a micro version of the macro like overall story so this is an ongoing series of episodes or or issues all varying lengths just however long they need to be uh, for each story but and uh, this one's maybe 60 pages or so um i mean that's a very rough estimate but um i wanted everything that happens in this first episode to be uh like a just a small version of the overall big story so they are facing a big boss that's kind of a s smaller version of the f bigger boss that they're up against the bigger villain um the the problem Farah is dealing with and uh does she uh continue to to follow uh sword um her hesitation with how he's changing, her worry that she's losing her place by his side to this boy. I got to put all that in there. Uh, Sword's uh, reluctance to take on the burden of taking care of this boy and to give up the life that he's carved out for himself, which really has been an avoidance of a uh, higher calling, you could say, that he's had. Um, uh, so... Uh, got to get all that in there. Um, and, and son with his, uh, fear, um, you know, he starts out looking really tough when he beats that beetle on, on the early pages, but, uh, 
he's uh he's he's when he faces bigger scarier things he's gonna face like uh, a lot of hesitation and fear in himself uh, to believe in himself so um uh that wanted to make sure that gets in there too um so i i yeah i constructed the story knowing that i wanted it to be a kind of a micro version of the big story um the emperor uh is like a lizard king so now i've got a, a lizard king that's like a minor king of this city and and went with crocodiles so uh, which it'll be different than the emperor than the big villain Um, but but similar. Yeah. So um, yeah, closing up the scene. This this shot. There's a lot of headroom in this shot, um, and the figures are kind of small, so that I can establish the the room a little better. Um, but by making them smaller and moving them lower on the page, I'm gonna have plenty of room for word balloons because there are quite a bit. Um, you might recall or, or an earlier page, there's a giant spider that came down from the ceiling and scared uh, Sun, and uh, and I hadn't shown it again since then, and um, I went ahead and threw a little hint of it in this panel, now that we have a bigger view. Um, so, um, you know, I didn't want to, I thought it was a good idea to just not show it, and then it, it was kind of sudden the way that I introduced it. Um, and it may have looked so large that it would it would concern the reader and they might get distracted like why are they acting like everything's okay this spider looks so big it's like and maybe i should have made it a little smaller because i i just didn't want people to worry about it it was just supposed to be like something in the room but by not showing it again in the room and having no one else you know no comments on it after that it is a little odd uh, it could distract the reader so um i thought well if i at least show it in the background here um you know, just kind of remind people, yeah, it's normal. Uh, yes, it is there. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that isn't too distracting for the reader the way I um, did that scene. And yeah, maybe I would have done it differently. Uh, if I did it now, maybe I would, I would try to solve that problem in a better way. But, um, you know, onward and upward here so I'd, what's done is done uh, yeah figuring out where to put shadows on his face here uh, so you can see like there's a little bit of window and curtains behind him uh, and I wanted like a pretty extreme close-up on his on his face and just make it look like he's kind of grimacing squinting he's just uh, uh, this is like his moment of frustration with uh, the position he's really found himself stuck in um, and this is uh, he's he's keeping it together though um, and and throwing on uh, you know his a lot of black on him there so that uh, he pops off that background and then uh, here he's pulling out the eye of the bug god, the bugged, uh, as, as I called them, the giant beetle, uh, that they had killed earlier. So he's paying her, um, with an eye. Now she didn't ask for payment, but this is like further hints at his, uh, his strong religious morality type, uh, well, his, his, his way, as it was called. Um, so like he wouldn't take anything without payment. Um, no fa uh, wouldn't wouldn't take a favor um so that's why he's paying her something whether she likes that or not pencils are coming pretty quickly here um yeah i had a from the thumbnail i had a good picture of how i wanted a sword to be walking here um started sketching out his figure and and got a little caught up in the details uh, and, and then I hate it when I do that because then I always remember I need to, uh, I need to like just do a quick loose figure and, and not, not to do, to the, do the details yet until I'm sure where they're positioned. Cause I realized basically he was like, um, 
I'm not quite in the right perspective the way I was drawing him or like a little too low on the page. Oftentimes it's just the position on the page, like on the panel that they're not quite in the right spot. But um, yeah, you can see how I found my horizon. Uh, that informs the how short uh, Sword's back leg, his, uh, his left leg is to his right there since he's walking towards the camera. Um, kind of figuring, okay, the horizon's around his chest, uh, so that'll be, uh, the, um, the weaver should be shorter than, than that, because if she was kneeled next to him, she would be down at his waist, not, not as high as his chest. And, you know, just figuring out, okay, how high would, how tall would, would sun be? Well, based on the horizon line, he would, he would be as tall as the horizon line uh, is on, uh, on a uh, sword there, kind of up to his chest. So uh, that's how I kind of figured out how tall, how large those those figures should be in the background. Yeah, so I've been keeping up with the uh, getting up early and getting to work. Um, been making more uh, time uh, and get, m making some headway with uh, the Clever Kaiju community. Um, connecting with other artists. I'm trying to make that a goal too. To This year I want to connect with a lot more comic book artists um, and peers and uh, or, or, uh, or mentors for me or up and coming artists that I can mentor. Um, and um, with Clever Kaiju, uh, the studio side of it, um, we uh, We've started, well, it looks like we're about to start an animation gig that, that'll really take off. Like, a, I've already been doing some drawing for it, uh, paid work, but not. it's been kind of slower and just like character designs. But the actual animation portion should be picking up soon. Uh, and that'll be nice. I can I can help my friends get, uh, get some money, get paid to work, and we can make uh, something awesome together and, and just get better at working together and... Uh, we'll just see where that leads. So uh, I am excited about that. Um, and I guess I'm also uh, trying to update uh, my web site and my web store um, for Ike Comics. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, this channel is not about how to make money uh, in comics. That's, I'm not interested in, in talking about those things very much because well I don't I don't find it that interesting and it's not I want to inspire people um and with with uh more my you know more my mindset and everything um but uh but that's what I'm thinking about uh more more in the past week or two um because I want to uh, be open to to making money. Uh, I want people to be able to find my books, uh, be able to read them and see if they like them. I would like to have readers. I would like to have money from it. Um, of course I would. Uh, but the problem is I don't want to put a lot of time into that. And so I tend to spend more time writing and making and drawing stories and a lot less uh, than on the marketing or posting on social media or anything like that. Um, something I've been kind of realizing lately, though, is um, some marketing thinking uh, can actually benefit my storytelling, benefit the, the work itself. So, um, you know, when I made uh, the musical mishaps of Cat and Fiddle, there's this cool kind of character, this cat in a tux with a fiddle. It's ridiculous. Um, the book's all right. Uh, you know, there's, it's got some strong suits, but, um, the book itself could have been better. I w I could have written it better if I spent more time, uh, on the marketing. If I, if I thought about, if I was drawing, you know, prints and t-shirts or whatever with my character, I think maybe the design would have been a little stronger. Um, I would have been more focused on the character and 
uh, more focused on what is it that people will love about this character that would affect how I write the character, I would make a better book. Um, if I, if my attention was on, you know, what, what, uh, what's really awesome about this or what will people like about this and spending some time on that narrative for myself, sharing, sharing in that way, thinking of it in that way might actually make better work. Um, you know, so that's, you know, that's more in line with, with what's, uh, this channel's about than, than the money making, but, um, yeah, so if I if I do that with uh, with an, an if I if I put some more time in marketing, uh, then my old books and this one can become more uh, well. I can make them better, and um, and they can get more readers, hopefully. So, um, and and, and I, I may become a better artist, better designer as I. I figure out like uh, how to make stuff look cool. Uh, something that I would want to buy. Um, so, so I feel like I need to develop in that direction a little bit uh, because I think it's going to make uh, my art better too. Um, and my story's better. My character's better. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys posted on what happens with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've really, uh, I've really enjoyed that with this book, um, I am producing one or two pages every week and, and I finish a page fully with, uh, with the dialogue in because, because I don't fully write the dialogue until I letter the page. Um, so, so now I've got the story completely finished up to this point. And that is, uh, that's more rewarding because I get to be excited by seeing the final page. Like every week I get a new reveal, uh, for myself. Um, but it also gets things to that final stage so that the next page I draw is better informed. It's informed by a more final story. Um, and instead of drawing the entire, you know, story and then going back and finalizing the dialogue and stuff, um, uh, I can, I can let the, the final, the decisions I make in the final version to, um, to inform the next page I draw. Um, so that's been really, um, a beneficial part of, of the approach I've had now of doing it this way. Um, and by sharing like my process and everything I'm doing, it has me thinking more about my process. Like it's, it's, it's what I've been, uh, saying, you know, from the start that, um, that this is for me too, that I need to share my work this way. Um, and it's, I'm already seeing the benefit that I'm more focused. Um, like I think about my work more, um, reflect on it, um, and it evolves at a quicker rate. Um, so, um, so it's good. And it just, it does require discipline. So I gotta stay uh, focused. Uh, I gotta, I gotta keep being positive and keep working, f moving forward with things. Um, my phone just popped up into the view there. I was, I was looking at the thumbnail on, on my phone. And I'm referencing that to, to double check the, uh, the initial layout. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, con you know, like, um, being disciplined with like the thoughts we think, you know, that's one thing about like this channel where I'm, I'm getting to reflect on my work a lot and improve it. Well, it's just keeping me focused. It's keeping me positive. Um, and, uh, when I, you know, when I think negative thoughts and struggle with negativity, uh, it's, it's just not productive. Like it, it eats up all this, uh, mental space that, that could have been put into, uh, improving and, 
and doing doing better work a better draw you know better in the long term but even just in that moment uh a better a better panel a better face drawing uh, whatever a better pose um a better conversation with someone so yeah there's been there's been some of that this week trying to uh some negativity cropping up uh just like you know just doubt and negative thoughts uh and then uh just staying staying focused i think part of it is because i'm sleeping less with uh getting up early to do this and that just makes everything feel a little more difficult than it used to when i was well rested um and uh, i can handle it it's just uh requires a greater uh greater self-control and so uh that's that's been that's been the challenge here yeah um so i've got yeah the shadow here on the the shadows on sun in this panel are gonna help him stand out on, into the foreground uh, and then uh, sword standing at the door I've got his shadow cast onto the door and that'll help ground him into his physical environment make it clear that he's right there at the door um, I used to put more lines on the page, more like folds uh, in fabric and wrinkles on faces and stuff like that. Um, just trying to, I mean, that's something that keeps changing. It's like, can I use less lines to convey, uh, you know, that, that it's fabric, for instance, the, the, the draped fabric by the window. Um, if you capture like an outline of a, of a figure, well, an arm, a hand, then you don't need as many details in it for it to communicate well. Uh, I also used to use a lot more highlights. Yeah, like here, there's there's lines to imply the folds in the curtains by his head, but I I let it just I I let the lines stop before they touched his head, and then as it gets closer, like under his nose, I didn't draw any curtain lines even though they're there. I just let them be out of focus. Um, and, I, and I was just gonna say, I, I used to um, do a lot more white highlights in black areas um, that either, either with white out after the fact or just being very careful with my line work. And I'm doing less of that too. I'm trying to let the blacks just be in chunks and the whites in chunks because it's, it's just simpler that way. And so, I, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm. Uh, that's another way that I find myself kind of changing here. And I'd like to get more extreme with uh, close-ups and things. I, f I feel my, my uh, ca camera angle choices uh, changing, my shots changing a little bit that I want to get a little more uh, extreme or dynamic with like extreme close-ups where you don't show the whole head in the view things like that and that's all from just thinking about my work more lately uh, keeping it you know through this channel and revisit I you know I draw this page and then I watch myself draw the page while I talk uh, on the video so and while I edit the video together I get to see pieces of it so it really does keep it in the front of my mind I'm really looking forward to this next scene uh, there's gonna be a lot of sword fighting with large groups uh, of people against sword um, it, it's gonna be a lot of action a lot of a lot of figure figures to capture um uh, yeah i think i like i'm really looking forward to it i think that um i think uh action 
um, capturing, you know, these multiple movements on camera from multiple figures in a, in a three dimensional space. You know, I don't know how else to put that, but more complex actions, uh, and realistic actions and the way the bodies move, it feels like they're moving. Um, but I just, I feel like that's been a strong suit for me that I haven't explored that much actually. Uh, like in, the seven dwarfs uh there's a big fight scene between a, a big undead bear and and the seven dwarfs and that was uh a really neat uh scene and it was like the first of its kind i'd really done and i realized oh like i got a knack for this um sequential action with multiple figures and and i think i have a way of uh, doing it and conveying it that it's different than other people so uh, I'm curious what I can do with this upcoming scene. Uh, and I just have a feeling that it's, it says something about me as a creator, that it's, it's something that really, you know, it's just my way of doing it that I'm going to be able to uh, reflect on and show people. Um, and I think it'll be a really important part of this, uh, ongoing series, uh, is the action itself. And there's going to be a lot of it. Um, sometimes with big beetles and sometimes with uh, groups of people and armies and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, really looking forward to tackling that that whole scene. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess figuring out what kind of creator I am and what kind of stuff I like making, it just comes from quantity, making a lot of different things. Uh, and yeah hmm yeah I don't know I, I was thinking of artists I know I think like sometimes there's an artist and, and you can tell they've got talent they're, they're doing well but it's like they they're not quite being themselves or they haven't quite um the type of book they're making isn't quite right for them. And if they just made, you know, a different kind of book, they might really find they're liberated and they're suddenly like able to really uh, shine. Um, and I think that, that maybe I have found that book in this, in this one. I think I found the project where I, I can, I can really shine and, and come into my stride um, and just, just by chance in a way, just, uh, just worked out this time, I guess. Um, but I, yeah, I love it. I love helping people and find, find you know, seeing people like find, find the, their thing, the way I'm finding it here, find the type of book that really suits them, uh, where they can, where they can grow and shine and, uh, and their, and their real skills here, their real, uh, personality. So, um, yeah, I think I've found that thing. I, uh, cause I mean, when I made this, I was like, well, I'm going to spend over a year, like just on this project pretty much. I mean, I might do something on the side, but I, I'm going to stick with this project. Um, and that's a big commitment, but, uh, I made the right call for sure. As, as I, I get more of it done, I see that it was the right call. Yeah, a little wide out here and there, lines that went too far or whatever. There's the thumbnail. And then the finished page, uh, that the second panel, the top right one, it was changed a bit. Uh, and now the final with, with colors and letters. And there's that uh, close-up so you can see that better. And then the, yeah, the bottom half of the page. And that is, uh, that's where it ends. That's where this scene ends. Next one, yeah, is going to be fun. So I'll see you next week for that. Be the practice of your art and encourage others to do the same.